welcome, welcome back. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> we have a special, special guest here with us today, Aaron Mosby. Aaron used to be a former student in the office I worked at previously before I moved to Ecuador. So, Aaron, welcome to our channel. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. It's good to see y'all again. It's been like, what, like eight, oh, seven, wow. eight years now? Or so it's been a minute. It's been that long. Good, man. Wait a minute, 2016, I was, I was, 2016? I was, I was like, I was 26. Okay. I'm 33 now. What's the, what's the, what's the math on that? Six years? Yeah, seven. Seven, years? Seven, seven years? Seven years. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, my God! It's, it's been a minute. He, he he's a he's a grown man now. <laughs> <laughs> More grown, I guess. I was kind of grown. <laughs> yes, not, but you're school, you're you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're a full grown man living in a whole nother country. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. amazing just to be able to work at an office of intercultural relations, and you know that really just opened me up to the world. And you know, be able to be where I'm at now, and then see y'all where y'all are at. It's just like, I don't know. It's almost like a full circle thing. Like, you know. that is true. <laughs> so, what made you move out the country? Well, so I left in November 2021, and you know, it was around the time during the pandemic and all the political craziness. I was in Georgia at the time, working at University of Georgia, and okay. um, at the time that was. That was one of the, 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 it was number one or number two public universities with the most cases and stuff. And just seeing wow. how they were, you know, addressing the situation. Cause no one really knew what was going on for real. And they were kind of like just trying to brush things under the rug, but like everyone was getting sick. And okay. that on top of, you know, how like, you know, the Georgia pol political climate was and stuff. And it was just like, I gotta get out of here. Just, you know, I was like, I was just, I gotta leave Babylon, like very soon, you know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like I, I didn't know where I was gonna go. I just knew I had to get up out of there. And it's something I've always wanted okay. to do since I was a kid. It was just like, all right, this is the time. And yeah. What What really said it for me was um, me looking, starting to look for remote jobs. But at the, like within a week of me looking for remote jobs, I had a CEO come into my DMs and message me saying like, I heard you were amazing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but at the time I was, I was in the artist residency. Um, I had a artist art studio with a bunch of other artists. We were making art, hosting events, things like that. So um, this person knew an artist that was working with me and like I was referred to them. So they reached out to me looking for a remote graphic design. So, I started working for them like on a contract basis and then they ended up hiring me full time. And I was like, oh, this is my ticket. I'm to go. <laughs> that yeah. that worked out perfectly. And just so I did not state in the beginning that Aaron was a graphic designer in our office of Office of Intercultural Relations at Old Dominion University. And he did an amazing job with a lot of graphics in our department. We had people from yeah. other departments wanted to recruit him. And we tried, we had to hold on to Aaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say you so were a what big a part of me staying at the office, though. <laughs> you, you, have, you have my back a lot. I really appreciate it. I tried to have all the students' backs, but, you know, some of them, yeah. you, you know, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You was my work mom, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. I've heard that since you left. Which is crazy. Oh, yeah. You came into that role. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why Mexico? All right. So, um, specific uh, Merida, Yucatan. And um, I heard about it a couple years ago from one of my friends, John. Shout out to, John. Shout out to you, John. Um, he's traveled all over the place, him and his uh, now wife. And he said there was something about this place that just made him want to come back, you know? And that was the first time I heard it on my radar. But then, um, like me and my ex had friends from Baltimore who moved out here and they were here a year before us and they were just talking about how like, oh, it's time to get up out of there and stuff. Y'all you know, gotta come and stay here because it's so amazing and stuff. And 
you know, I did my just do's. I did my research and things like that. And, you know, a lot of the blogs were just starting to get hip to what Meta that was. You know, was, a lot of them were saying it was the second safest place in all of North America and things like that. You know, it's like, um, you know, I had to make sure that I was bringing this into a situation where it's like, all right, have, you know, a smooth transition out. Um, yeah, that kind of just convinced me. It was just like, all right, start saving up. And um, eventually we just made that move in November, right before my birthday. Has that uh, area that you moved to, what's the name of it again? Merida. Or Merida, okay, has, Merida. Merida. Has it changed since you moved there for like, for the better or worse, or is it still the same? It's changed a lot. It's gotten more expensive. I mean, when I moved here, it was cheap-ish. You know, more, yeah. more, I would say a lot less expensive, you know, in, in okay. just a matter of a year and some change, you know, it's, I think those blogs started to make their circulations and a lot of people started to like really come out here and check it out. So it's been really changing a lot. There's, there's, there's a lot more westernized looking buildings being put up yeah. and, um, you know, the U.S. dollar has been going down too. So that's one part of it, but also like, yeah, it's just like. The, the, the real estate situation is crazy and food is going up, everything. Yeah, and the peso's gotten stronger that we heard. So yeah, it's just, it all kind of mm -hmm. goes together, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, like the funny, the, cra the biggest indicator for me about how they are definitely having a lot more um, immigrants come here is that like, when I first got here, there was not really a thing called vegan. <laughs> you know, like, right. Um, like, I'm not vegan, but every now and then, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm all over the place. Right. So, you know, going to places like saying we don't want meat or anything like that, they look at you like, uh, no, no carne? No, right. no. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now it's like vegan restaurants everywhere and stuff. They're all opening all over the place. You know, this is, it's, yeah. it's so wow. different, you know? Eventually, uh, the, the industry here will probably start catering to, to the people who want certain things, who have money. So yeah, I mean, it may change a little more. It's, I know in some cities it may have changed already. Where we live, things are pretty much the same as when we got here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll oh, that's, change. That's good. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing it's a slow process for y'all though. It just happened yeah. real quick because people come out here buying property everywhere. So. Yeah. And Mexico's so much closer to the U.S., so it's just it's just a lot easier. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So slowly, it's just like it's going to get down there eventually, but you know, hopefully, it's yeah. a very slow process. Yeah. And with more and more people um, getting their passport, because so much is happening in the U.S., I feel like a lot of places are going to have more and more people exit out of the U.S. and go to some of these South uh, South American countries, Central America, yeah. Central America and yeah. South America, and all over mm -hmm. the world, honestly. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big advocate of it. get out here when you can, especially black people. Like we got to get out and see the world more because you know the United States wants to keep us there as consumers and you know try to make us scared of the world. It's like we come we come out here and it's like I actually like it here more than I like it there. You know I feel exactly. safe, so much safer. You know I see cops out here and it's just like <laughs> they got bigger fish to fry. Like <laughs> they're not thinking right. about exactly. Yeah, I think about it, yeah. It's totally different. Yeah, yeah. Totally different. And I, that's how. Go ahead. Like, no, no. Well, that's how it is here. You know, at first when I got here, I was kind of skeptical. When I saw police, I'm like, oh my God, well, you know, are they going to say we're doing something wrong? They paid us no attention. None. None. Right. If the transitos mm -hmm. pull you over, like the transitos don't even have guns. You know, they're just looking mm. for, they either look for a bribe or they're just trying to give you a traffic, you know, citation or whatever. Yeah. Otherwise the police, they, you know, they don't, they don't pull people over or anything. And it's, it's so refreshing to just be able to be yourself, be walking down the street and the police, they look up at you and they look right back at their phone. They're not even paying you any attention. Just the same as anyone else. And that like, yeah, that feeling, like, that feeling is kind of priceless if you grew up in the States as a black person. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They're even friendly sometimes. Sometimes they'll be like, hola, you know, when it's yeah. time is or something like that. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> when it's time. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of caught you off guard. Like, yeah. are you talking to uh, me? Yeah. Yeah, but everything awesome. caught me off guard here, you know, when I first got here, because, you know, living in Baltimore and then moving out to Georgia during that, high, that crazy political time, I was head on a swivel. It's like I was ready and, and just ready to go all the time. And I came out here, people being nice, and I was paranoid. I was like, why are you being so nice to me? Like, right. 
Why are you inviting me over for dinner? Why Why are you right. asking me to have a seat right here with, beside yeah. you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Weird. it's sad that it's it's really sad that you have you know you leave a country because you're so on guard that you can't even relax because you're like, okay, what yeah. do you want from me? What you know? Uh, you trying to scam mm-hmm. me? What you know? It's always like, what do you want? I was going to ask, uh, how'd your family feel about the move? Oh, um, well, the, you know, Mexico has a reputation to be a terrifying place to people who've never been outside the United States. And a lot of people assume that Mexico is a state rather than a whole country, you know? So my parents were kind of like, why are you going there? You know, people get snatched up out there and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, there's there's areas. Like I live in... I live in West Baltimore. Y'all didn't say anything. Like, you know, <laughs> there's, t- there's places in the United States. Y'all, y'all, because it's the United States, you don't have that same perception. But like, you know, like every now and then you'll, you'll, you'll hear the news or whatever, like that whole thing that happened on the border where those uh, those, those black people cross and everything. I got family hitting me up. Hey, you okay? And I'm just like, why? What, what, what happened? You know? And right. it's the equivalent of me hearing some news about something that happened in Washington State. And me calling my mom in, in Virginia, like, hey, y'all good out there? I heard some crazy stuff going on. Yeah, there. yeah. Like, yeah. right. By the time for y'all to <laughs> wrap it up, you know? But, <laughs> yeah, but like, I, I think it's been, it's, it's, they had, they had, they had that paranoia. Um, a lot of them were like, you're not going to be here for family stuff and all that. And it was like, I mean, yeah, I do miss that. But at the same time, like, this is something I've always wanted to do for myself. And it's something that, like, you know, if anybody got the chance, I would tell them to take it. Go see the world, you know, because I think it makes us more well-rounded. It makes us more cultured. It makes us all around better human beings, you know, and I've been, you know, sharing stuff with them. They see where I'm at. They think I'm on vacation all the time. It's like, that's not really what it is because I got palm trees. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but, you know, like they, they definitely, you know, want to come. And even, you know, my, um, my ex-in-laws who are still family, so they came out here to visit. And they're ready to come back, like in the next month or two, you know, I've had friends come out here. And, you know, it's just like it changed their entire world. Now, you you spoke about earlier having an internet outage, power outage. Is that something that mm-hmm. happens on a regular or does it sporadic? Um, I would say regular sporadic. So it's not like it happens every, not even every week, but like okay. if, if like a thunderstorm that happened earlier, because it's, it's it's rainy season, you know, and okay. um, it gets it rains pretty torrentially down here, but only for like maybe thirty minutes or so. If it's thundering, and that thunder echoes off the walls, it's like, oh well, this everything better shut out in a second. And then it cut off, and then it cut back on, and stuff like that. Okay. So my internet goes out more often because maybe I forget to pay the bill. But <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but like you know, every now and then it just goes out, and it's like, for why, 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 why did we do this right now? I, when I need it the most, you know, and it's like right. it doesn't stay off the bar very long. It's just, yeah. it just happens. Like maybe once or twice a month. Same thing happens yeah. here. Uh, regular sporadic, I guess. Like you said, <laughs> is probably the best term. Yeah. Is it typically here? It happens at night, and it's usually like late yeah. at night for whatever reason. I don't, maybe it's just coincidence. But it's usually late at night. It's, there's, it's been rare, I think only once, where we were out of power during the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it will go out, you know, maybe every couple of weeks or whatever. And it's... It's it's usually like when you're sleeping, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, when the fan turns off, you're like... What? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't ever turn them fans off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is yeah. about fan. We gotta have that fan. I gotta have consistent air on me. Like, yeah. Even if I'm not here. Yeah. I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I got a fan on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's usually in the middle of the morning, early mornings, it'll go out, the fan goes off, it'll last sometimes an hour sometimes it's been yeah, sometimes it's hours. a couple minutes sometimes like four or five hours yeah. but it's usually back on okay. by the time we wake up in the morning um but it's not it's okay. not where it's in the way honestly it's not even that big an issue does that That's affect your remote yeah. work um well yeah and the thing is like mine is the opposite it's always it always goes out when it's like in the way <laughs> like, right. so yeah yeah, but I mean, it, it doesn't affect it too much because fortunately my neighbors who I'm really close to, they're also from the States. Um, um, 
my friend Sam, he has an internet connection that actually extends to my house. So sometimes I'm just like, let me go and click on his for a little while, you know, and, right. <laughs> you know, use that for a little bit. So you talked about the cost of living going up because of the influx of people coming in. Can you give us like a range of what it was in 2021 compared to what it is now? Yeah, yeah. Well, the US dollar when I first got here was like, one dollar was like 21 pesos. It was really good, you know? Yeah. Now it's down to like 16. So yeah. things have changed significantly. And it's like, it's throwing my math all off now. You know, like I used to have right. an easy, you know, 120th, you know, it, it, it was easy <laughs> to do that. You know, now it's just like, you know, man, yeah, but um, still the cost of living is, I mean, obviously way better than in the States. Like I live in a three bedroom and a provider with a pool and you know, I'm paying just maybe a hundred dollars more than when I was in Georgia in a one bedroom, one bathroom, one floor apartment. So wow. it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, I have a, I have a cleaning lady that comes, you know, and she cleans my entire house. And it's like, I would have never been able to afford the United States. That was not even something I would even look up. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like a normal thing out here. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, food? Has the price of food changed significantly? Oh, only because of the U.S. dollar. But even in certain situations, like, and I've heard this from uh, people who are more tapped into the local community, you know, like other groups, you know, I've, I've connected some of them and they talk about how um, some restaurants have upped their prices because you know immigrants or expats have they, they tip more than what the locals do, so they'll put that into the actual price, you know. So it's like it's gone up in some areas because of that. But you know, local local restaurants and things like that, they're pretty much the same, and you know they always have amazing food too. So it's like yeah, depending on where you go, you're gonna pay a grip. You're gonna pay about amount, amount around the same amount as you would in the United States for this, or go local and you're paying like, you know, 20, 24 pesos for a taco and stuff like that. You know, and it's just like yeah. barely a dollar. So, same here. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah, we have the same thing. Like if you go to a American or Canadian uh, restaurant, you're gonna pay close to American prices. If you go to the locals, like for breakfast, we can have a whole meal coffee with juice. Three dollars and fifty cent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and yeah. Uh, let me just say, in Ecuador, we have the we use the U.S. dollar. Yeah. So it just makes the whole conversion oh, really? so much easier because there's no conversion involved. No conversion. Yeah. Wow. Their, their currency is the U.S. Know. dollar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I never knew that. You may. Yeah. If you go to a lunch at more of an American restaurant, you're m most likely going to pay seven to eight dollars. Yeah. Because and and honestly, like where we live. There aren't a lot of Americans, American restaurants. There really aren't that many at all. It's mostly like Ecuadorian stuff. I had a question for y'all about that. Well, yeah, or <laughs> Peruvian or something like that. Um, Uruguayan. But for the most part, there's not a lot of American restaurants. Um, but yeah, like she's saying, if you go to one that is, yeah, you're going to pay like American prices. Got you. And there's yeah, no fast food so, restaurants. Yeah, they only, well, there's McDonald's and stuff out here. There's like, they even have like TGI Fridays. They have, they have Texas Roadhouse out here and a few other things. Right. I was like, oh man, it's, it's wild. But I had a question for y'all, you know, in regards yeah. to American okay. restaurants. So they have some American restaurants that are like, oh, y'all clearly had American cuisine and y'all are making the food that tastes like it should. And then there's some that's like, you only seen pictures online and now you trying to make the same thing. You never had it before in your life, you know? <laughs> All right, so here's an example right here. So like, when I first got here, there was a, we, you know, we went to one of the malls and in the food court, they had this place that's like, you know, kind of like Southern Cajun, you know, food and everything like that. And I was like, that's the kind of cap. So we went there and got some of that right. food, you know, and like a lot of the signature, I guess, dishes or whatever, but not like, like dishes from like the Cajun mm -hmm. culture. It's just more so like Southern American food. And it's almost like, None of this stuff is really what it is in the United States. It's almost like a, a uh, you say like uh, cosplay in a way. So there's some restaurants that seem more like cosplay, and then there's some that's like, who y'all got in that kitchen? Because this is this is like this is like a black woman with like the elbow fat. It's like right. in that pot. This is this is 
I need to go shake their hand. How y'all, how y'all get this out here? Like, <laughs> you get both of those. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's not as many. Like there's not yeah. that many options here. So you, if you're not going to get like, there's no soul food restaurants here. Or there's like a Cajun place in the mall. And that food is just, I wouldn't call it Cajun, honestly. But we might as be the far same place, as like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I forgot the name of it. But, um, <laughs> It's Cajun as, something. Yeah, as far as like an American style uh, place here, nah, not. No. Not really, no. No, that's not I mean, really an issue. Let's like, just say we haven't been there. If right. it is one, we yeah, haven't been there. Like Pizza Hut tastes like Pizza Hut. Pizza okay. Hut here tastes better than the Pizza Hut in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, it's not as greasy. Uh, KFC. KFC. K- you, y'all got KFC in Mexico? Wait, wait a minute. You got half better here too. Oh man, <laughs> man, listen. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just opened up a church's chicken out here, and I'm just like, why, 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 why is this here? Like, yeah, my family, I've heard that it's amazing. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, they I, use they use different chickens, man. It's I, better. Yeah, uh, our church. I mean, not churches. I'm sorry, KFC. Normally you get what the coleslaw. Well, they get do have coleslaw, like mashed potatoes and what else? Green beans. Mashed potatoes and be- whatever you get in the states, yeah. like macaroni. And they cheese. don't give you that. You get the rice beans. and the minestra beans. It's so good. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know how y'all get it in Mexico, but we get rice and beans as a side here with the chicken. You get French fries too nah, if you that's, if if that's you want, what you yeah. want. But they get a little coke about that big. And the plantains on the side, oh, man. Yeah. What? It's a oh, different so y'all beast. Have, y'all have an yeah. authentic, like, Ecuadorian. It's not yeah. even KFC, it's EFC or something like that. Like, Right. <laughs> the only the <laughs> only thing that's exactly the same, and I wouldn't even say exactly the same because the chicken tastes better, but the chicken is, 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 is you can get crispy or whatever, just like KFC in the States. The, everything else is different, though. It's rice and beans or whatever and, like, a little salad and a little drink, and it's, it's so good. It's so much better. That's a question I have for you. Noted. Okay, so when you go to the grocery store, compared to the U.S., the products that you buy, let's say um, milk, uh, ketchup, mustard, what is it, yogurt, is it different? Like the size-wise, taste-wise, is it different from the U.S.? Um, so if it's imported, it's going to cost more. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's some things like that. I would never buy it. This is like the cost of something when you go to Whole Foods in the United States. Like, yeah, you know, it's crazy. But um, it everything else is a, a bit more affordable, and they they usually taste pretty. You know, you have the trusted brands and stuff like that. It took me a while to find a good hummus. You know, um, because I don't know what they they just didn't figure that out. A lot of the brands can't figure that out here for some reason. Um, <laughs> despite there being a huge Lebanese population here. Um, yeah. So there is that. The one, the funny thing, and this is almost like a rite of passage for people who move here, trying to understand the metric system, is like when you ordering stuff. Like, cause we have a thing called Rappi, which is like you can order groceries and they have it brought to you. And stuff. So you have to get like the measure, like this. You order certain things, like you know, I want a thing of grapes. If you don't know your metric system, <laughs> that person will deliver seven grapes <laughs> to your house <laughs> or a drumstick, and this is like, oh. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it takes a, a kilo, bit of half kilo. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So that 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 was that was a hilarious thing. You know, when I first got here, um, but groceries are definitely a lot more affordable. I, I definitely get more bang for my buck. And then if you go to like local places, like you know, uh, a fruiteria where you can get like local fruits and stuff like that from local farmers and stuff, vegetables and everything. I mean, it's just like you almost can't beat it. Yeah, and the fruit guys that just kind of go down the street with that little loudspeaker, uh, almost like the ice cream truck back home, except these guys might be on a little, yeah. little pickup truck and a bunch of fruit in the back. Or on a bike with yeah, a cart on, a on bike the front. With a cart. So. And you go down there and you, get a, you can load up with a, two bags of fruit for like $2. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah but you know, I, I think it's just a thing down, you know, south of the borders, like there's always those cars going around like it's an ice cream truck, but it's like they're just yelling out you know what they're selling yeah. this stuff in a very unique yeah. way saying it in a very unique way everywhere yeah and yeah. We, we've gotten good enough good enough in spanish to know 
Like, oh, he's got papayas, he's got bananas, he's got mangoes, you know, yeah, he's got watermelons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we hear it so much. So, yeah, now we, that's mm -hmm. that's probably the most Spanish we've learned, honestly. Like, when it has, when they, no, I'm saying when it comes to do with food, oh, like okay. food, yeah. Oh, like, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. That's what, the same thing. I could, I could, I could work my way through a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I can't have a conversation, but I can I can tell you what I want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on a question about uh, healthcare, is there like public and private for uh, people who immigrate to the country? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of medical tourism here. Um, I mean, you have you have you can have doctors come to your house and stuff. You know, it's it's been really cool. Like I I I landed on my ankle wrong playing basketball. A couple like five months ago or so, and like I was like I can't get to the, I can't go to the hospital. I'm stuck in bed, and they came to my house, you know, and it's like yeah. a normal thing. So it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's normal to like the local population as much because you know it's, it is still more cost um, costly for them, but significantly cheaper here, you know, to do things like that. Like in the states, I would have just be like you know what, I'm just going to triple socket and just carry on. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ace bandage, whatever. If, yeah. I lose, if, I, if I lose this leg, then it was good. And it's, it shouldn't even be that way. It's so crazy because even when we went to the um, to Europe, we both got sick there. Yeah. And they have online doctors that you can call and they can assist you over the internet and write your prescription, send it to your email. And just like you said, here in Ecuador, you can have a doctor come visit you if you're unable to get to the right. clinic or whatever. Yeah. It's a lot more convenient, wow. a lot more uh, affordable because you pay for a service here and like, that's it. Like you're not, that's not a co-payment. It's not like the first payment and then you got to pay again for the follow up. Yeah. Like, no, you pay 25 bucks and then you, that's you it. make it seen three times on that 125 bucks. Yep. And that's it. Yep. yep. Yeah. You can't, you can't beat something like that. Do, do you have insurance, like health insurance? Oh. Oh, that's like, I, it's like looking at the cost of certain things. It's like, I mean, I don't really need it. Um, like I'm looking at, I'm looking at different things. Like I do want to get LASIK at some point and it's so much more affordable than in the United States. It's like, oh, huh, I'll just save up a little bit and you know, yeah. just, just knock it out. <laughs> you know, like the <laughs> is like, I'm just gonna have glasses forever. Like I'm never gonna be able yeah. to see clearly. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Here it's like it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a dream that could potentially come true now. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> for like people who want to move to Mexico, are jobs available for the immigrant people who immigrating there, or is just for locals? Well, for you to uh, get a job based in Mexico, you have to have a temporary work residency, and then also mm -hmm. like. Um, I think you have to have a job already lined up that is going to like help you with your visa situation and yeah. you know all things like that. So it's not really a thing that you can really do. So most people, most I think, yeah, all the immigrants I know are working remotely or something like that or retired. Okay. So as a person of color, do you experience uh, discrimination in any form? So I would say overall. Um, as far as the totem pole is, I am close to the top. And it's such a strange feeling because I feel like this is what it feels like. This is what, this is what it feels like for white people. Like, you know, like you get <laughs> so much more privilege and things like that. And it, it's, it's just uncomfortable because I would say I live in a, you know, and it's like I fell into it on accident. It's like, man, I'm, I live in a pretty gentrified area. And, you know, this it's, it's so much being built up around here that... I don't know. I definitely feel kind of out of place because I'm so used to not being on this side but the other side. So mm -hmm. um, there's that aspect. But on the other tip, being that I live in a Yucatan, which is very much um, indigenous population here, like the Mayans and things like that, uh, because our histories are so close together, like, I feel like I'm almost like praise or even just not, not praise but like they get really excited to see us right. you know like and I, I mean the fact that i'm really tall and stuff and you know I, i've seen mayans who have the same skin color as me so i'm a little bit darker but 
it's it's like they get excited to see me out here, especially if I'm in like local, like in the Mercado or something like that. They're just like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, and then if I speak Spanish, this is like just a whole other level of things. So it's just really cool to see that and, and to feel that kind of love, you know, that like, you know, if I get stares out in Ubles out here, it's, it's not the same kind of feeling that I get when I was in the States, man. It's like, if you, if I'm in the South somewhere and like someone's staring at me, it's like, oh, where are the exits? What can I use as yeah. a weapon? You know, where's the foldable chair? Just in case, you know. Right, where's the foldable <laughs> chair? Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go put a folding okay. chair up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Over here, my people were yeah. like, "Man, it's ghetto over there." Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, it's 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 so much. It's so amazing. Like to be able to go and like going to the little pueblos outside of this city and just you know do things with the locals and stuff it's it's i just feel so much love you know and oh, that's cool. and and, 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 and and unfortunately it's like because our histories are so similar we almost have a unspoken of like history you know yeah. and i think it's just black people and indigenous people in general like we we have a certain understanding like you know we've been oppressed yeah. we still are kind of oppressed so it's like we relate to each other a lot more. And I think that right there is the line that kind of like brings us together, fortunately and unfortunately, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, I, the only time I really felt like I was discriminated against was, you know, um, being, in, being from the United States, there's a certain level of expectation that you have a lot of money, you know? And, mm -hmm. you know, we do have a lot more money obviously then you know the local population here like they they a lot of people are just living day to day you know it's like i can't even imagine what that's like but um like outside the city there's i've been coming from trips you know and i've been pulled over like i would say total three times and like asked to get out of the car and like they searched my car and stuff like that asking if i had drugs and stuff yeah. so that didn't feel good that was kind of a triggering situation that kind of took me back to the u.s because you know there's certain cops out you know there's poli the police that look like they aren't in for the best, your, your best interest. You know, they're just right. like, we don't get paid enough. You got money. Yeah. Hold us down. If we find something, yeah, we're probably not going to arrest you. We're just going to ask you to pay us some money so we can let you go and stuff, you know? And it's yeah. like, it's that, that stick feeling you get where it's just like, I don't know. I don't think there's any kind of like, um, law, lawfulness to the situation right here where I know I'm going to get home safely, you know? So that's happened three times and it was all in a very close period of time too but outside of that i mean like 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 we said before like most times cops are minding their business especially in the city they don't pay me no mind and you'll see cops out here they'll be on the back of trucks with like those anti-aircraft guns I'm like what are you attack what do you have that for <laughs> like yeah but um yeah they they just wave or no don't pay your mind or sometimes they'll stare at you because it's like He's not indigenous. Like, where is he from? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's it. Are the locals welcoming to the foreigners in general? Um, in general, I would say yes. But I think that's also their culture. Like, Mayan people are just naturally very giving, very, like, friendly people. And that's the unfortunate part is that they've been taken advantage of for so long and, you know, things have been taken from them. But it's just like... I don't know. It's just almost like a higher level of like human, just, a, a, I don't know, um, connection that they have where they just yeah. care for people. And it's amazing to like even see that because it's like, man, I want to be more like that. And I wish more people saw that. Like, we should all be more like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's like they want to show you like, you know, their farm and like this is where they, you know, we're making tortillas back here and stuff. And, you know, you go down to, you know, this way right here, I'll show you where the cenote is, go swimming and stuff. And, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And, oh, nice. you know, it's like, I can't take anything away from that. It's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good way to segue into how has your life changed since you've been abroad? In so many ways. I have a different relationship with things that seem scary, if that makes sense. You know, like, you know, we all deal with fear on a regular basis and like our relationship with fear determines, you know, where, what we can achieve and stuff. So 
I would say my, my, my perception of the time has definitely changed. Like, I'm over here just like, when did I do this? <laughs> so I, I would say <laughs> two months ago, I went with a few of my guy friends on this trip to basically be in the jungle with the Mayan elder and stuff. And we we were roughing it. Like, we slept in caves. We slept in the cenote. We were walking through the jungle barefoot. You know, we were laying out in the stars with just like on a yoga mat or something, you know, just like dirty, um, not really eating much. And it was kind of like, it, it, it made me more, feel more spiritual, more connected to the spiritual, spirituality. Like, I feel like Mexico is a highly spiritual place. And um, to be able to experience that out here, just being in nature and being able to see the things that I've seen, um, you know, there's so many different beaches out here that I can go to. And it's just like, <clears throat> I shouldn't wait for vacation time to go and enjoy my life. Like I can enjoy my life now, today. Yeah. And I make time for that. Like every week it's like, all right, I have to go to the beach every week. I, I deserve to go to the beach every week. I deserve to just relax, you know, and not think about anything else. So I make an effort to go and like really just wind down somehow. And when I was in the States, you know, it's like, I mean, even in Virginia, you know, we didn't have access to weapons. I did go to the beach then, but it was just not as often, you know, as before. Right. You just drive past it. It's like, oh, man, I'll go there one day or something. You know? But yeah. I think the the pace is, is so much, it's so significantly slower here that I really had time to just sit and be quiet, sit and um, reflect on a lot of things. And I don't know, I think I've, I've just, grown significantly in a way um, as someone who is t- tapped into um, I guess the human experience beyond society. You know, I think society kind of dictates how we should be and that's not always the best thing. You know, like, you know, in the United States, it's ca- you run like capitalism. So it's like, you sit down for a little bit, you're constantly like, what do I need to do next? How do I, I have to be productive? I have to do this and stuff like that. And out here, it's like people can just sit and be and enjoy each other. Yeah. Like I see, I go to the beach and I'll see an entire family, like they just go to the beach and having fun and not thinking about anything. They grilling out, they just kicking a the soccer ball around. They got, you know, yes. drinks and playing music and stuff. And it's like, wow, that's, I don't know. That's just like, <laughs> you can just be, a, you can be a human again. You can just be, you know, exactly. and I've been able to do that so much <clears throat> more here. And that's, I can't go back to the other, the other way of life. Like I can. It's It's very similar here when it comes to the people. The people are really nice and welcoming and just naturally, they they, they just seem naturally more human. Not to say like, you know, America's a less human, but you know, just more. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean though, yeah. Yeah. And when we, because we live right here on the beach and we see families all the time. You rarely just see like a couple uh, or yeah, you really just see a couple. It's usually like a couple with their kids, the grandparents, every, the cousins, the aunts. Everyone is there. Everyone's having a great time. It doesn't matter if it's cool outside or hot. They're having the same great time. And that's something we just really enjoy seeing. We don't even go to the beach that often. And we live right here on. But we just like seeing the people having a great time. But they just really genuinely enjoy themselves. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then, of course, on the flip side of that, too, I think... One of the biggest things is that my mind has expanded so much more and that like I'm so much more open to different things, you know, than I was. I feel like I've always been open minded, but being able to actually do things and check things off my bucket list, like, you know, I got my scuba license. I've been scuba diving, you know, 80 feet underwater and, you know, I've, I've eaten food that is just like, I would have never I had crickets. What? They actually yeah. good. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? And it's, <laughs> And this is like, I've been able to do things that just, I've only watched from Travel Channel as a kid. And it's just like amazing right. to be able to say like, yeah, I am doing that now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like going back home, it feels kind of weird because I feel like I don't belong more now than I did before. You know? uh, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It's like your mind is you open now and yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you just, you have a different frame of reference for everything now. Yeah. Yeah. What what on that note, what advice would you give people in your age bracket or even people that if you go back home that people you grew up with, what advice would you give them? One big thing is don't 
really don't listen to the hype, all the negativity in the news and stuff, because a lot of the news wants you to stay where you are, really. Mm-hmm. You know, um, keep you in that cycle, that's that full cycle. You know, to where you go to work, you go to church, whatever, go to school, you come back home, you pay your bills, you go consume. You know, um, yeah, like go see for yourself. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing for me. Like, I know people can say all this stuff. Like, oh, go see for yourself. Now there are obvious things where it's like maybe you shouldn't go do that because there's a this is this area right here is like <laughs> the U.S. Embassy <laughs> said this is a red look. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you yeah. go here. But <laughs> but more often than not, the places that you know you might have not have a lot of knowledge about, um, like firsthand knowledge, is it just trumps any anything. Any she say she say kind of thing for real, um, so that uh, I honestly wish the United States put more importance. And I, I'm not trying to bash the United States, really, well, sort of, but at the same time, I wish we put more importance in like different languages. You know, like learn yeah. learn that like, learn another language for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my goodness, like be the the more Spanish I'm learning, the more understanding I am of this culture and a different mentality. Because I think language really determines how you think about things you know and i've been able to see a different perspective on a lot of different things just because i'm you know learning different words and you know what why it this means that and stuff and i don't know and even looking at even seeing different dialects and depending on where you are it's like man that's spanish Are you sure because that sounds yeah i don't know what that is like <laughs> yeah yeah, there's yeah, a lot I mean, of words that in Mexico that don't translate here in Ecuador and vice versa. And I'm sure, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, um, what, do you, what do you call it? The, the, the cops that are on the interstate? The, like the highway patrol? The state troopers? Yeah. Yeah, what do they call them over there? Oh, here, here they're transito. And they're everywhere, not just on the interstate. I've, they're like all over the place. Yeah, but I've never heard that word either, you know? So, yeah, wow. but... But yeah, like it's just the biggest thing for me is like keep yourself or try it, try it out, be open. I will say, uh, do you have some other countries that you want to visit that you haven't? Everywhere. I mean, first of all, go to yes. South America. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to do my best to go to Colombia um, around New Year's, and that'll be my first time in South America. I, I've been, to, I've been to Belize recently, and I can't wait to go back. Love it. Um, but I want to go to Ecuador, see what y'all got going on out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> let's get some KFC, some EFC. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everywhere. I want to go to South, like, multiple places in South America next year. I actually want to try to move across water. Um, like, Ghana has been probably number one on my list for a long time. Yeah. Um, I want to go to Kenya. I want to go to, I want to, go to everywhere in Europe. Um, Asia eventually, but I think like I'm slowly just like South America across the water are right. my biggest priorities right now. I just feel like across you know on the other side of things like yeah Australia obviously, um, New Zealand, um, Thailand and things like that. But those will come. I think yeah. Africa is like it's been calling me for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. We that's you know those the places that you name are places that we want to go to and places we've been um, because we just came back from Europe, from Paris and Rome, which was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not going to say it, but I just feel like there was an increase of black people traveling to Europe this year. We had to get out. We had to go see for ourselves. Everybody had to go see uh, like after COVID. Like, hey, let's go to Uh Europe. Yeah, because it was it is like a, yeah, like a yeah. huge. I don't know. It's, it's probably just you know our own minds making this up, but yeah, it just <laughs> seemed like a lot of people were going to like uh, France and Italy and Spain and you know different places, mm-hmm. uh, which is great. Thing, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a real thing. And this and I mean, black people have better reception over there than they have had in the United States, you know, historically. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> those communities have already been like been there for a long time too. A lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad we, we do. to see that stuff. I can't wait. Yeah. We do want to go to Ghana. Yeah, that was one of the ones that we definitely want to get to. Um, wow. That's and a long trip, obviously. That was a, but, yeah, I don't know if uh, I can do that. We've been to Dubai, and uh, we've been to Bali. 
So like long flights, we know we've had our practice. So <laughs> we have to make it to Ghana. Yeah. That's definitely a place we want to go though. Definitely. Yeah. I hope to get to know what that's like. My longest flight was probably five hours. So I don't even know what it's like oh, to yeah. on a plane for more than more than that. Like how long was that? What was your longest flight to Bali? Like what was that? No, it was, was it, was it was Dubai. Was, well, Dubai was fourteen straight. Straight. Yes, DC. straight. Um, Bali was thirteen to Taiwan, something like that, from LA. Yeah. And then it was like another six hours. It was a four. Long, I was like it, another four hours. It was like a like whole. It was. It yeah. felt like twenty four hours had went by. It actually did. It was. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a long trip. It was long. And when we went but, to um, Italy, it was nine hours was, straight, yeah, and then we Portugal, had a connection, and, and another, that was. Three or four, another th three or four hours to yeah. Italy, yeah. But uh, yeah, Oof. yeah. Get you, get you some practice, man. Get you some yeah. practice. Just but know, pick a good airline. Yeah, get a good. Don't. <laughs> I know that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you go to Asia, if you go to like, if you go to Southeast Asia, man. Um, I can we can tell you from experience that EBA airline is amazing. They're they're incredible. For us, for I'm us. not we. Yeah, I can't speak for everybody. The, yeah, the our experience was great. Air Portugal, not so great. Yeah, to Europe. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't. Emirates, if you want to go to the Middle East, you know, Africa. Yeah. That's Emirates. Dubai. Mm -hmm. Dubai. Take yeah. Emirates. Emirates. Right, that Amazing. one was the best. Yeah. Yeah. One of the they're, best. They're incredible. Yeah, they're incredible. Yes. Mm. Anyway, we're getting, we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm worried about taking, no, let me get my notepad out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> what What is your favorite dish to eat in Mexico? And, and hold on, let me add, add a little oh, caveat here. Okay, it doesn't have okay. to be a dish. Oh. It could be anything. It could be a snack food you found in the store that just surprised you. Because What that's... is your favorite thing? <laughs> what is your favorite thing? That's hard because I'm a foodie. I am a foodie. And Mexico, so a lot of, a lot of people have a mis misconception that Mexico is, you know, it's the same. And no matter what state you go into, it's like the United States of Mexico. But Mexico is, is diverse as I don't know I mean I've never been to Europe but I would imagine it's very close in that you know I, the states that I've been to are so different from themselves as far as food that it's just like ooh, like Mexico City yeah. my friend my friend just got back from Mexico City and she brought me a chopped cheese a New York chopped cheese sandwich from Mexico City <laughs> you out there getting all kind of stuff I'm just like it's an international <laughs> it's an international city you know um yeah. I was in Queretaro and I had gorditas with like um it had like anime and like crickets in it and stuff and like cactus and stuff and it was so good and um where i'm at now yucatan it's yucatecan food so it's it's not like you know tacos are more so like i mean we have tacos here obviously everywhere that's, that's part of, that's probably 40 percent of the reason i came to mexico but, <laughs> um but here in yucatan it's like you have food here that you can't get nowhere else in mexico so, like, it's like you could take in Mayan food. Like we got panuchos, sambute. I love panuchos. Panuchos are basically a flat fried tortilla, tortilla, uh, corn tortilla with black beans inside. Like stuff with black beans. And we top it with like, you know, um, I don't know, pickled veggies, lettuce, whatever meat you want. You eat it that way. So good. So good. Um, I would say that's probably one of my favorite things here. I, like, I love sopa de lima, which is like a, a you know, a, a lime soup. You know, it has like shredded chicken in it and stuff, and it's like almost like chicken noodle soup, but it has like a limey liminess to it. That's tart. I'm, I'm just yeah. like okay. so much better. Yeah, it's like slightly tart. Yeah, it's just so much better. Um, my favorite snack. Um, there's these cookies out here called it's a, it's a it's Gamesa. I don't know if y'all have that brand out there, but they like Florentina, like strawberry flavored cookies, and they're like strawberry pop tarts. They're like little round little stuff like flower shaped things with like a uh like a marmalade inside of it and i can eat probably that whole pack if i don't stop myself like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah this, this the food here is just so so diverse like i was in i was in cosmo and i had lionfish pizza lionfish like, lionfish pizza nice like, wow stuff you know, like Stuff like that sounds like a flex, you know. It's like, yeah, I'm over here eating lion <laughs> you know what I'm saying, my folks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a rap lyric or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, it's cool. 
it's like oh. yeah so much good food here now is there a large um expat black expat community there where you live it's hard to say what large is but it's 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 here enough like i'm in a few groups to where like there are events hosted all the time like i mean i had my first juneteenth here in mexico yeah. which is as well you know like i've been able to do a lot of things i was i, I played flag football like a, literally the weekend before um just i i had i'm in a running group with a bunch of black people so there's there's a significant amount but i think you know given the size of the city which is pretty a pretty small medium-sized city um there's not a lot but more than you can imagine i would say okay. like yeah like every now and then i'll see a black person in the course like you know when you see black people outside the united states or that, that's like not this. like an African person like that you're just like <laughs> hey yeah, yeah, yeah. i see you <laughs> Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Do you find it hard to find clothes in your sizes there? Because here it's impossible for me. Right. Um, clothes. <laughs> clothes. Not, well, you know, if I go to the mall, like they have Zara stuff. So Zara is like one of my favorite stores. So I can go there. Um, they have H&M. You know, it's tips, stuff like that. But um, in a lot of places, you know, I can't buy shoes here. Like they don't have, they stop at like size 10 and a half here. That's like the Same biggest size you got in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> I wear a and a half. So it's like, I have to order my stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Yeah, I will, I'll, I've been running a lot of the same shoes for a while now. It's like, it's time for me to update them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I couldn't get shoes until, until I left the country. Cause I wear 12 and it's no, you're not finding it here. Oh yeah. Yeah, you might as well get some sandals. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> He can't even get sandals. Yeah, yeah, no, it's right. I can't even get sandals. I, I yeah, got some slides like I brought with me. Edge, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything stops at like a, a 45, 46, or 45, or 43. Okay. 40. Like, no, it's, it's 40. Yeah, 43. So like 43. Everything stops like 43. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's, it's pointless. Pointless. Um, what do you miss? Um, what do you, since you talk about clothes, what else do you miss from the U.S.? Oof. That's easy. Um, Tarjay. I, even, I love to be Tarjay, you know. <laughs> we <laughs> like, talked about Jones. him a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Trader Joe's. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. So whenever I'm in the States, those are the two things on my list. That, and I have a list of restaurants I need to go to. I need to go, I need to go get me some, they don't have no African food whatsoever. They they hardly got any Caribbean food out here. So I got to get me something. Okay. Like some, some Jamaican oxtail. Um, I need to go get me some yes. African food. I need to go get me some, what else? There's always a few spots I go to. Um, those are the main things. Like a lot of ethnic, I, I love me some Ethiopian food, so I go get that. Um, and I'm only saying this because the last places I've been to are like kind of food places. Like I was in DC recently, and I was also in like Manhattan and stuff like that. So I have a list of all the things. Give me some Middle Eastern food. I mean, I just love ethnic food. And out here, it's like the main thing out here, they have a lot of Asian, right? They have a lot of Japanese restaurants. So yeah. you can get sushi pretty easily out here. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing we yeah. really found a lot of in Italy. Italy. Yeah, it was, it was a sushi place. Sushi every place. place. What, every sushi? Place. Yeah, yes. really. Yes. Yeah. Japanese restaurants and sushi places. There was as many of those as there were pizza places. Um, do you have any plans? I think you've already answered this question, but do you have any plans on moving back to the States? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Well, we can go to the next question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay. So, like, there's an opportunity that presented itself, like, for me, yeah. career-wise. Like, that's like, you know, like, hey, we have this residency over here. We'll come pay for everything. You just come, I don't know, paint some really dope stuff, and we'll have you, you know, on that level. Yeah, I'll come. I'll go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love California. Like, every time I've been to the, specifically the Bay Area. Like I have a, one of my mm -hmm. really close, closest friends who also went to ODU. He lived there. Um, also named Aaron. I think you might have met him at one point. Yes, I but, did. Um, yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, Aaron Turner. Yeah, <laughs> they live in the Bay mm -hmm. Area. So like, every time I go out there, you know, Oakland, San Francisco, it's just like, man, this place is amazing. If only it wasn't so expensive. I could probably yeah. live here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of amazing things in the United States. 
when I go back to the United States, it's like to see family or to do things that I have not been able to do when I lived in the United States. Like when I recently went to DC, because I, despite me living in Virginia and also living in Maryland, I have not done a, a lot of things in DC. So I didn't know much about it. So I got to go to the African American History Museum, you know, mm-hmm. check out all these restaurants, go do a lot of those things. I, I go back to the United States as a tourist. Basically. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely understandable. Well, that was, you know, of the questions we had, that was that was really it. Um, did you happen to have any more questions of us? Because we love answering questions. He loves answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I would say, what is, what was the biggest culture shock for y'all when they moved to Ecuador? Ooh. I didn't have one. Yeah, I don't think there was a big culture shock for us. It was more just uh, the transition of a place that didn't, that English wasn't the first language. Yeah. And so things weren't necessarily shocking for us. It was just maybe a little difficult to to transition to a culture that just didn't speak English and that we have to try to figure out our way with everything. Yeah. And just the cultural differences, but it wasn't really shocking to us because we had kind of been prepped for that before we came. Okay. So I can't say we had a really big culture shock. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had a conversation not too long ago with another couple. They asked that. For me, coming to Ecuador, it reminded me of my childhood. You know? Um, Really? Yes, it's a... A lot. (laughs) What, what you, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the reminder of our oh, childhood. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, you know, some areas are paved, some areas are not. You got dirt roads, you got, you know, houses that unfinished. unfinished or they're adding on, but, you know, they don't have a lot of money, so they have to do it gradually. Um, the food is like more natural because there's no GMOs allowed in the country. Um, mm-hmm. All the fruit is just absolutely, I can eat a, we got some tangerines in here. He eat one two I or three times a day. And I'm, I, I will no lie spit out 20 seeds in this one little tangerine. And I don't care because they're delicious. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you go to the States and like hardly anything has seeds anymore. It's, it's uh-huh. Everything yeah. is just different. It reminds us of how we grew up. Yeah. And the food, I mean, like the, the vegetable, I mean, the fruits is so flavorful. You know, it's something that you. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, you used to could smell a peach and smell like, oh, this yeah. smells like a peach. You it smells like an orange. Away, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the States, you're like, mm-hmm. I don't smell anything when you go into the grocery store and you got all the produce. It's just produce. It's just colorful. But it's like solar, yeah. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, solar, yeah. yeah. It's a little different here. But no culture shock yeah. whatsoever. It was just, like you said, the only difficult difficulty that I have is trying to learn the language. Just making sure you're saying what you think you're saying and that you're answering what you think what they're actually <laughs> saying and not what you think they're saying so yeah uh, yeah um i meant to ask you uh how much spanish did you speak before you moved Whew. um so i took a class in high school and i was i, I say that with a lot of like I, I say that very liberally um i took a class and we didn't really take it seriously like we were kind of in that class just like goofing around for the most yeah. part in high school um, so I had a basic, very basic, like I knew my numbers, some right. few, like, you know, in- <laughs> introductory things. So when I got here, it was just like, uh, yeah, but I picked up on a lot of things, um, to where I get compliments on my accent now. Like people are like, oh my gosh, like they, they assume I speak more and I'm just like, whoa, 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 now. Whoa, 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 but it's very limited <laughs> in the sounds it makes. Okay, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so like I can I can um, I can sound out any I can read any word and stuff like that. You know, um, I have a pretty good grasp on you know contextually in a lot of situations. Yeah. But um, I'm not fluent yet. You know, I can get I can get certain places in conversations and things like that. Yeah. You know, um, and I think you know I, I'm exposed to it every day, so it's like I get a little bit more every single day. So I'm moving the needle forward a little bit. That's just enough for me. I was taking a little, a few classes when I got here, but then my teacher got a full-time job. So I was like, I just didn't have gone back yet, but um, I plan on doing that too. Like a lot of my friends speak Spanish a lot too. So some of them are like, only speak to me in Spanish or only message me in Spanish just like that. So it's like, okay, challenge accepted. You know, that's been a really good way to practice. What about for y'all? 
Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> two years of Duolingo hasn't gotten us very far. Duolingo, <laughs> well, for him, <laughs> it's been a little bit though. It's been you a little know, bit. Um, he understands, like he said, he said context clues. Con- he's a lot of context clues. Yeah, and it obviously yeah. uh, that's a man thing because I don't get any of it. I don't hear any of it. I can read it. I can write it. I just cannot speak it. I am the epitome of what a North American person sounds like when they're trying to speak Spanish. Horrible. Gringo. I don't. Gringo. I don't know if you've ever. I don't, you probably never Gringo. seen like King of the Hill, the cartoon King of the Hill. But anyway, yeah, I've seen it. Anybody watching this, like Pinky Hill, when she's speaking Spanish, like that's what oh, Sean yeah. sounds like <laughs> speaking Spanish. I'll teach you. Izquierda means left. And derecha means right. So do I make his girder or his birchie? <laughs> she sounds like an American oh, trying to say something in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. It's it terrible. Me think, it reminds me of the stand up where the guy was like, muy, muy cerca. Muy, muy cerca. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, it's, it's so horrible. Funny, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I tell her you gotta add, you gotta add the little the little accent into it. You're not making fun of them. You're like you're trying to say it the way that they say it. But she feels yeah, like the season she feels like she's making fun of them. Yeah, seasoning. Uh, uh, yeah, these yeah, greens are bland. There, you know? <laughs> 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 these greens are bland as I don't know what. I don't even think they have oh, salt man. in it. Oh man, I got that boiled spinach on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Come on, West Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 it'll click at some point. I think like the more you're exposed to it, it's like you get to like almost like checkpoints with it. Uh, okay, I this whole thing makes sense just a little bit more. Like certain things just start to click. But you had to get to those yeah. milestones, you know? So yeah. But I mean I might, let me ask you this. Uh, the Spanish they speak down there, do they speak fast or is it like very? You know, I heard in some places they speak very fast down there. Okay, so I don't know if you saw Kevin Hart little video he put up on Instagram where he said he, he tried to pretend he was Spanish and he tried to speak Spanish and he said that if you ever listen to a Spanish person, all you hear is the click, 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 click. right? <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like here. It's yeah. just like it's like. And that's all I hear. Yeah. I don't hear anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I try. It's not, I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to make fun. It's just what I hear. I can't hear yeah. it clearly because it's so fast. And I want, and I, you know, you say despacio, like, can you slow down? Yeah. And it's still yeah. the same speed to me. Yeah. And, it, and the dialects are different, like from the mountains to the coast. So it's uh-huh. like people on the, on the coast may have a hard time understanding someone from the mountains. And they're speaking the same language, but there's kind of different dialects. And it's, it's kind of like the United States. Someone, yeah, someone from New York yeah. goes to Atlanta, and they're like, "What? What are you talking about?" You know, like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep." Yeah, you're speaking it's English, but it ain't the same places, English. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a joke. You know, the 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 most stressful situation for me is like when I'm in a situation where I have to pull out my phone and use the Google Translate. But the network is low. It's like not, not working. I'm over trying to touch some mountains. Like, oh, just do it. Un momento, un momento. Like he said, he's sitting there looking at you, and he, you saying at the phone, like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo. And that's when there's like a lot of people behind like, you waiting to do something. Sweat. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's like, yeah. and we try. To- like, I don't, I don't, I don't got bank Spanish. I don't got I don't got emergency Spanish like yeah. <laughs> the hospital yeah. situation come up it's like well just, I don't want to speak English because you know. yeah that's it yeah we feed off each other you know I know some words that he doesn't know and he can say it easier than I can so I'll tell him and then he'll say it like okay that's how we're a duo when it comes to trying to speak Spanish yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. and sometimes I, really I grasp it yeah. Sometimes you grasp it, and um, when you have someone else around you who's also an immigrant but speaks better Spanish than you, it's like you instantly look at them like, "What, what, what was that?" Like <laughs> you got this right. Yeah. yeah. And when they don't get it, they look at you. It's like, "Dang, oh no." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And sometimes you just gotta be like, "See, see, see." Yeah, you don't know what you're agreeing to. Like, see. Yeah, like, All right, yeah. yeah. 
Like, this ain't what I ordered. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. You yeah. might just go ahead and eat it. Go ahead and take it. Yeah. You can't argue in Spanish. Yeah, you like it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, so. So, Aaron, oh, uh, please share with our viewers. Tell everyone what you got going on and where they can find you. Okay. Well. So as an artist, like I go by Nora James, that's my artist pseudonym. Um, and I'm an all around creative. Like I, I, can, I, I do painting, drawing, I do, you know, design, obviously I do photography. Um, I even mess around in music production. Um, what else? I'm in videography right now, learning that stuff. Fashion design, pretty much everything under the sun. So yeah, um, you can find some of my main things right now. Um, I have my website, just put it back up. Uh, it's norajames.art and that's where you can okay. see a lot of my uh, recent um, visual arts and photography you know but I have a lot of projects I'm working on right now so you know soon come so keep in touch with that and uh, you'll see some really amazing things coming down the pipeline yeah. of course make sure, make sure you send us the links to your uh, website social media whatever you want uh, post it and I'll put it in the link in the description sure thing sure thing yeah if I How's your, oh, I got to say one last question. How's your mailing system? Oh, we don't have this, So there isn't, there isn't a mailing system. <laughs> All right. We, your address means almost nothing. Um, <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> I, I will say this. We can get packages. Ooh. We can get Amazon packages. We've, we've tried it two different ways. And there, it, it, you can get them. Um, of course, you got to pay like the, the uh, custom customs fees. fees and stuff like that. So it's going to cost ridiculous more. ridiculous sometimes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we paid like seventy five dollars on the last order we did, just for, just in shipping. Yeah, and it's yeah. it was already it's over not going to be ha it's anyway, not going to so. be happening that often. No. I think that was it for the year. Yeah, it was, just, it was certain things that like okay, these are things that we needed, and we want to try Amazon direct, and it goes from Amazon to DHL. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you can you can get packages here, so it's not it's not like you can't get anything. But the thing right. is, there are things here that you can purchase from the store that, you know, a lot of time people feel like when they move to a, another country, you can't find certain things. Like you may not find an air fryer. You can't find a blender. Those things are here. Yeah, you find um, stuff here. Now, sheets and towels and stuff like that may not be up to your standard, like the U.S. They, yeah. They're like thin and thin, yeah. rough. So you may want to bring mm -hmm. those things with you when you move to another country. So it's best to connect with people there so they can tell you like, hey, bring your own sheets, towels, because over here you, you know, a rag feels like a towel, you know. <laughs> yeah, like you, you, you wash your car with this or you use some of my Right, right, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm. But um, I got you. no, no mail system. We get asked that all the time. Yeah. But there's no junk mail, no bills. No junk mail, no bills. <laughs> That's the best thing. I ain't got yeah. no mailbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't send me anything. I don't, yeah. can't get it. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have the mail yeah, system I mean, there? But, I mean, system, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we do have, there is an Amazon Mexico because we're, you know, close to the United States. So I, do, I can't get Amazon from Mexico and then also from the United States as well. Um, which is pretty cool. But the thing is like, even when I was in the United States, I was like, I was not trying to use Amazon. So it's like, that's the, that's the most reliable way for me to get things now. <laughs> yeah. Any other way, it's like, it might come six right. months from now or yeah. just oh, wow. never at all. And then other times it might be like, like the custom price, you're gonna pay twice, you know, what yeah. it costs to even buy the thing. So yeah, there's that. But other than that, like, I don't, I don't know about you, but like, I, the only bills I get is an electric bill and a water bill and they slide that thing in my door. Is having um, you say you drive? Is it necessarily uh, is a car necessarily needed for to for you to get so, around? So I don't drive, but I I can get a rental here really easily. Like I know you know okay. it's all about who you know. I, I know a guy. It's like yeah, I just show him my driver's license. We cool. We, I pay him twenty five dollars per day. Hey, here's, here's keys. Right. <laughs> so I I've definitely driven around here, but um, I have a bike and I definitely utilize Uber. Like Uber is significantly more affordable. When I go to the United States, I get sticker shock. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. Out here, it's like I'm paying maybe two to five dollars. It's going up, going up since you know I lived here. But yeah, I'll 
Just take an Uber. Easy. Or a DD okay. or, um, yeah, it's like a few things like that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Y'all driving out there? No. No, we got a scooter. You wouldn't even, you, uh, you oh, couldn't even. Oh, y'all, real local. <laughs> yeah, we got a little electric scooter. <laughs> um, and otherwise, we take the bus or taxis. If you saw us on the scooter, wow. it's just hilarious when I think about we're in our like I'm in I'm 15, he's in his 40s, and we're on a scooter at this time of our life. Yeah. And Steve, you pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm 250, and I, yeah, but I, that's why we got a we got one with a uh, strong motor, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, because it got definitely got to go up the hill with both of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> If you're struggling, someone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, LaShawn, kick your legs back a little bit. Just kick <laughs> Man, look, we really appreciate you uh, doing yes. this with us. So it's, it's been great. Likewise. Igual and, I'm I, yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the viewers are going to ve- uh, really appreciate this because you're in Mexico and your boots on the ground and you know what's going on. So it's been very appreciative. Of you answer the questions that we have for you yeah absolutely like and it, i mean i love doing stuff like this because i just want to encourage more people to just like i said like just go see the rest of the world you know? yeah exactly yeah. yeah well that's the goal so yeah once again thank you we appreciate you thank being y'all. here it's really good to see y'all and talk to y'all again always good energy yeah. you know i hope to come yes. see y'all in ecuador very soon oh yeah oh definitely yeah. oh yeah we got room we definitely got room (laughs) for all everybody watching uh, thank y'all for watching like share subscribe make sure you visit aaron's website social media or whatever and uh support him exactly bye yeah good seeing y'all y'all take care all right